So the market last week ended on a very bad note. The market started to be afraid that we are going into recession as unemployment rate is rising a lot faster than expected. A lot of investors starting to think maybe the Fed should have reacted sooner instead of like waiting and keeping those interest rate too high. Is it too late to do something? Well, then we got more bad news. Over the weekend, we got a lot of media reporting that Berkshire Hathaway, so aka Warren Buffett, sold a large chunk of Apple over the first over the past two quarters. So what's happening with Warren Buffett? What's happening with Berkshire Hathaway? They're building cash. They're expecting a recession. They're expecting a market crash. That rose even more concern. Then on Monday morning, Japan kind of like surprised everybody on the very bad way saying, yeah, we're going to increase our rate once again. That sent the Nikkei down by 13% on a single day as a lot of investors are using the yen carry trade. What is that? Well, if you can borrow in Japan in yen at a 0% interest rate, and then you can invest in US assets that are supposed to generate a lot more returns, well, you're making a pretty good deal. But what happens when those the yen is going down and then the interest rate is going up? Well, you're kind of getting squeezed and a lot of speculative funds started to sell. Now we're up this week with a lot of volatility, a lot of concern, and a lot of investors started to be afraid of what's going to happen next. Are we heading into a market crash this fall? So there are two things that you should do right now. The first one is actually to relax because if you have been invested for a long time, the market is not crashing. The portfolio, your portfolio is in the red. It's just a small blip in history. If you put that over the past five years, well, the S&P 500 almost doubled in value and the Keen market is up by more than 60%. So there's nothing to panic right now, but it doesn't mean that you should not look at your portfolio. In fact, over the past few years, I've noticed a lot of investors have become complacent. They don't really mind. They've been holding strong dividend payers for so long and they have been paying dividend like for decades. It's all good. They don't have to do anything. Well, probably not. Maybe your portfolio is in bad shape right now and you're just about to find out if you don't take action right away. So I kept telling you that I love the DSR platform that I've built. So today I'm going to show you how I review my portfolio to ensure that it is well invested, well diversified, and I will avoid most of the bad losses in the event of a market crash. So let's get onto the platform and take a look at it. So now we are on the platform on DSR Pro where I can see all my portfolio combined together. So I can create as many portfolios as I want and then I can decide if I want to see a global view or if I want to select just specific accounts. So since it's a demo, we're just going to take a look at how you can minimize your risk exposure because in the end, it doesn't matter what you believe at this point. What really matters are the fact that maybe you are overexposed to a specific asset, to a specific sector, or a specific stock. So I always start with my allocation where I can look here and take a look at my asset and currency allocation. You know, I've been investing since 2003, and since then, I've been 100% invested in equity. So my portfolio right now is 100% aligned with my strategy, which would be to be invested all the time in equities. Of course, that's just me. It's not financial advice. You can decide to add preferred shares, GICs, ETF, mutual funds bonds, the platform can take them all as well and show you how you are well, how you are invested by combining all your portfolios. Because in the end, it doesn't matter what's happening in one portfolio, but you need to look at all of them. Your asset allocation is super important because it will explain most of your portfolio performance. For example, if you have been heavily invested in equities over the past few years, you've been making a killing. If you were in bonds and GICs, you're starting to make some interesting returns because since 2022, we have higher interest rate and it's great. But if you look at your returns over like the since the financial crisis, it has been quite low. 
The second chart here is the difference between the Canadian assets and your US assets. So I'm trying to always have that balance 50-50. Again, it's a personal choice. As a, Canadian, as a Canadian, I just want to, be, to benefit from great sectors that we have, such as Canadian banks or telcos, but I also want to have exposure to more diversification and more growth, such as, tech, some, such as sectors such as technology or military defense that I can only find, or international stocks that I can only find on the U.S. market. The second thing that I will do is I will look at my sector allocation. Sector allocation right here is you can see the large, my largest uh, account, my largest sectors are information technology at 24% and then 21% for financials. Ideally, I do not wish to go above 20% on a specific sector. So right now, I'm a little bit of a, a red flag for technology and for finance, but it's not the end of the world. What I don't want to see here is being 30, 35, 40% in one sector. Why? Well, each financial crisis, each market crisis will target a specific industry first. We got a tech bubble in 2000. We got the financial crisis hitting banks in 2008. So you get the deal. If the next bubble will be a technology crash, well, then I'm slightly overexposed to this one. The problem, if I had 40% in that sector, is 40% of my portfolio may drop by 50% or more. This is one thing I do not want to have. The second thing is, if you are overexposed to a sector, chances are you have many stocks in that sector and some of them are duplicates. A classic example would be to hold four, five, maybe six Canadian banks. I mean, I get it. Canadian banks are amazing. We have the strongest banking system in the world. But yet, if you're just adding more banks to your portfolio, you're just adding more salts. And if there's a mortgage crisis, they're all going to get hit the same way. So here I can verify if I'm too exposed to the financial crisis, to a, fin uh, to a mortgage crisis by looking at my holdings. So the first one is National Bank. You know that it's my favorite bank already. Then I have Royal Bank as well. So two banks already. It's okay, but it's not well diversified at this point. So I have a large bank and a small regional bank. Then I have BlackRock. Well, BlackRock is an asset manager evolving in the U.S., so this one is a pretty good diversification by adding this to my two banks. After that, I have Visa, which could be classified as one-third technology because they are using an amazing network to transfer money. One-third financial because, of course, they're taking care of money transfer. And one-third consumer discretionary because, let's be honest, if consumers don't buy stuff and they don't travel, Visa and MasterCard are not going to make that much money. But again, not exactly linked to Canadian banks. Finally, I got Brookfield Asset Management, uh, Brookfield Corporation, sorry, which is another large alternative asset manager. So I do have one that is a classic asset manager with BlackRock and another one with Brookfield. So overall, and then I have like a bunch of small position in my Smith Manager. So you can see those are like very small position. They will not have an impact on my portfolio. But for the four, the five largest position in the financial sector, I know I'm well diversified so I can sleep well at night. Now that I'm done with this, I will take a look at my stocks. So as you can see, I can quickly have a review of my pro ratings, which is mostly green, which is great, of course, and the dividend safety score, which I have eight holdings showing a, th uh, a rating of three, which is a dividend safety that is okay, but not crazy. But And then I have like one that is a little bit weak. So those are the companies I will focus first. How I do that? Well, I will look at the dividend triangle. So if I take a deep dive into my portfolio, I will look at my largest position. So I can see that I have Apple at almost 10%, Kushtard at 8.4 and National Bank at 5.75. So what I want to see here is companies showing a strong dividend triangle. So when I click on the stock card, I have the full analysis of National Bank. And what is really important for me is to see the revenue, the earnings per share and the dividend going up pretty much at the same pace. So I can see that there's a constant improvement in the earn in the revenue. Same thing with earnings where we do have a slight slowdown here, mostly because we have higher provision for credit losses. So it's important to look at the trend so you can explain and put that those numbers into a context. And again, what we see here is an 
like very strong dividend growth policy. That makes me sleep even well, even better at night because I know that this business shows very strong numbers here and I don't have to worry too much. Finally, if you're about to retire or if you're retired already, one other diversification that you must manage and risk exposure is your dividend diversification. So we do that at, Div at, at Dividend Stocks Rock is we show you how much you're making per holding. So you can see here that my largest dividend payer is actually TELUS generating almost 14% of all my income. If, you, if I was to retire on those dividends, well, I would know now that TELUS, National Bank, and, and Granite are my three largest, most generous payer in terms of dividend income. And if they, it's well diversified, as you can see, I have like a bunch of others, my retirement budget would not be too much at risk. So I hope that you have enjoyed this video and see how you can actually manage your risk exposure by A, looking at your asset allocation, B, your sector allocation, C, your stock allocation, and finally, you can look at your dividend diversification. If you have enjoyed this video, don't forget to give me a thumbs up to subscribe to the channel to not miss any other video. They are always published on Thursday. And also, I would like to invite you to download my Dividend Income for Life guide where I show you an example of how you can build a portfolio with strong dividend companies that have a robust dividend triangle. So the link is in the description below, Dividend Income for Life. And, and until the next video, which will be published next Thursday, don't forget to stay invested.